The 2019 annual Concordia Summit kicked off earlier today. World leaders gather in New York City for the annual event, which focuses on technology's role in dealing with global development and sustainability. Yahoo Finance's Julie Hyman is at the summit, and she joins us now along with Jacqueline Fuller, uh, Fuller VP at Google and president of Google.org. Julie? Thanks so much, Adam. Um, so Google.org sort of brings together all of those threads, right? Technology, sustainability, um, the sort of nonprofit world that a lot of people here are focusing on. So Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining us. Of um, I want to start with artificial intelligence because I yes. know that's something that you guys have focused a lot on. Earlier this month, you announced the winners of your Global AI Impact Challenge, which um, sort of posited ways to use AI in the nonprofit world. Why did you guys decide to do that? So our model as Google.org, Google's philanthropy, is we want to bring the best of Google. So we really want to leverage the assets of the company and bring that to bear for some of the most vulnerable people around the world. So we invest money, more than a billion dollars, um, but also our technology is really key and our Googlers, our employees. And when you think about technology, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning are really transforming industry. We need to make sure they're also transforming our nonprofit sector, and especially these humanitarian efforts. So we did this global open call. We weren't sure what we were going to get, mm -hmm. but actually there was so much pent up demand. And some of the winners, in fact, right here today at UNGA, I actually ran in um, to one of our winners on the street. Oh, wow. His name's Engineer. He's from Uganda, and his team is doing something so fascinating. So to combat air pollution, they've developed a sensor that does just as well as the big expensive air quality sensors to measure air pollution. They put them on the back of motorcycle taxis, and then they gather the data from around the city, and from that data, they run models with AI and machine learning, and they're able to understand what are the best mitigation strategies, how can we help protect those who are most vulnerable. We have other winners, for example, from India. Vadwani, for example, is going and working with farmers. So the majority in India um, are subsistence farmers. And they, they go out to the uh, agricultural workers who collect the pest strips to understand what is attacking the crops locally. Mm. And what they can do is just run a very simple image classification across the data on, okay, here are the pests in your field, but that allows the farmers locally to identify what are my pests and therefore what is the best pesticide that I can use. So this is a double win. It helps the farmers increase the cash that they get for their crops and those local families, but it also reduces pesticide use, which helps with the environment. Hmm so that they're not using things they don't need to use that exactly, are not well targeted on the exactly. pests. Exactly. Um, something I think you also discovered when you heard about all of these AI ideas is redundancy, or at yeah. least places where perhaps the global nonprofit community can be more in concert. Of course, this happens in the private sector also, right? But um, how, how did that manifest itself? Yeah, I'll give you one really good example. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we had a number of inquiries from folks on the front lines who are working on such an urgent issue, preventing death by suicide. And um, Crisis Text Line, for example, based right here in New York City, um, has been a pa partner in the past, and they were looking at how they could use artificial intelligence to m reduce the wait times for people who call in to get help, and also identify those who are most at risk of self-harm versus others who uh, were, could just use a good talk. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had another partner, the Trevor Project, that works specifically with LGBTQ individuals um, who is doing something similar. They both had phenomenally strong applications, so we wanted to fund them both, but we also suggested, hey, can we work together? And so the teams are now working together, and our AI coaches from Google, our Googlers, our employees who are so excited to work on this, are working with them to share across um, and open source together some of the, the underlying infrastructure and technology to make sure we're not reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. Something I'm always curious about as well, both again in the, in the private sector and in the nonprofit community is results and yeah. measuring results. So being from Google yes. and that kind of background, having this AI capability at your fingertips, 
Uh, how do you measure results of all of these many projects that you guys are funding? You know, one thing that we have found is actually there's many people in the nonprofit sector and, and including social businesses as well, uh, universities who are working on these challenges, they actually want to use data and evidence, but oftentimes it's the fault of funders. It's actually those of us uh, who need to step forward and fund uh, evaluation. And so what we do is we include funds um, with our partners so that they can do evaluation, preferably third party evaluation, and then we really encourage them to share out those those lessons and share out that data and evidence, um, even if sometimes there's some failure in there so that we can all learn together as a sector. So you become almost a database or a clearinghouse then as well of those various results? So, yeah, we bring together mm -hmm. our uh, partners because it's really their choice about sharing their results, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. so many of them, Charity Water, that's another sure. local group here in uh, New York City is another example where we funded them and said, hey, and we want you to post in real time the data and evidence you're getting from sensors that you're putting on these wells uh, to determine how many of the wells uh, are actually working that are built and developed to bring clean water in the developing world. And they were like, absolutely. Jacqueline, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy few days here, I'm of sure, uh, to spend with Yahoo Finance. We appreciate it. Jacqueline Fuller uh, is the head of Google.org, which is Google's philanthropic arm.